Hello everybody, this is Dr. Mark Dupéry in Toronto for my session on question and answer do, during the quarantine. Uh, again, this is hashtag quarantine with Dr. Mark Dupéry. Feel free to go on my website www.disasterclinic.com Go through, request a consult and send me your question. Sign up on our newsletter if you're interested. But send me your question and I'll be happy to answer them uh, on our social media. So, I have a question here from Isabel in Hamilton. When can I expect to see my final result in rhinoplasty? This is a very important question because everybody wants instant results. Now, a rhinoplasty, most plastic surgeons, we open the nose, so there's a little incision in the narrowest part of the bridge here called the columella. We open and we do all the work inside and then we close the skin over. And it takes many, many, many weeks sometime a few months for the skin to mow down to the smaller framework inside. So I want all my patients that the thicker the skin, the longer it takes. So I want all the guys, thick skin, porous skin, it will take many, many months to get that refined tip. In ladies, it's usually one to four months on average. Next question, Mrs. Silver from Thornhill. What is the ideal age to do a facelift? Another very good question, thank you. Facelift does not have an age. Uh, I often ask my patient, how many facelifts do you want to have in a lifetime? Most of our facelifts today, the deeper version, double layer, deep and smash facelift, will last on average 8 to 15 years. So if somebody comes at 42, she has to be ready to have 2 or 3 facelifts in her life. If she wants one facelift, I tell them 55, 58, 60 is a good time for a facelift. Now there are also anatomical changes. If I have somebody who's 45 years old and has already detached neck bands, probably from mom or dad, so it's genetic, or they have jaws already, which we cannot treat enough with the fillers without giving them a round face, then they may be candidate at a younger age. And there are different types of facelift. We have short scar, we have the very complex fat grafting, chin implant, upper, lower and mid facelift. Those are bigger procedures, usually reserved for bigger anatomical changes. And we have small changes where patients are happy with a little tuck where we'll do a short scar or skin only facelift. So basically it depends on age depends on genetic, depends on anatomical changes that I see in them, depends on expectation, and depends also on the skin quality. Now I have a question from Lisa and Antoinette. Lisa being the daughter and Antoinette being the mother. How do I know if I have lipedema? Now lipedema is a newer condition in North America, but it's been around for a long, long time. Our friends in Germany, in Switzerland, and England have known about this condition for a long, long time. It is genetic. We see it in daughters, mothers, grandmothers, sisters. Uh, I hear this all the time. Now I've been treating lipedema for many, many years now in Toronto. Lipedema is a condition where there is usually disproportionate amount of fat starting from the hip, going all the way to the ankle. Patients will have big thighs, big knees, unusual pockets of fat around the knee, and they get all the way to the ankle. It's very nice, it's, not, it's very thick. They don't like it, obviously. Uh, there are different stages for this. At some point, it becomes very heavy, hard on the joints. There's often pain involved. Dilated veins can come later on in time. They have difficulty finding clothing obviously because this is so large here compared to very narrow waist. There are patients who have also the condition in their arms and it can also have the same big, big arms, big forearms, and usually the waist is spared. They are working on genetic testing in Europe. Here we diagnose it really by clinical symptoms and family history. How do you know if I am a good candidate for vaginoplasty rather than DIVA? They're both different treatments. The DIVA is a non-surgical laser rejuvenation of the vaginal canal. It's a very common treatment we do at the office. It will 
help tightening inside. It will also help producing new blood vessels inside the vaginal wall and therefore newer, better lubrication. It's a non-surgical treatment. There's no downtime, maybe two days of no sexual intercourse, but it's a fairly easy treatment in office under topical anesthetic. It will never do what the surgical vaginoplasty does. So it depends on what the patient is looking for. The Diva laser is very good also for stress incontinence. It's been approved by Health Canada and the FDA for that matter. So when we get into the menopausal, perimenopausal time, Diva is something that will give not only some tightening, but some improvement in lubrication and some improvement in the stress incontinence. When we talk about vaginal tightening, it's a surgical technique where it's another general anesthesia. I will narrow the vaginal canal. So think of it as a big tunnel, long tunnel. So we're gonna narrow this tunnel. The most important is I will narrow the opening of the vagina. The labia majora will be shortened, will be tightened, and the four muscles located just in the back of the vaginal wall will all be tightened and repaired. So it's a very, very successful procedure, about an hour and a half to two hours in surgery. I will often, sorry, my doggies are here today. I will also often do some labiaplasty if needed. Now I have Kathy from Mississauga. How do you know if I need to replace my breast implant? Very good question. For many, many, many years, there was that 10 year average circulated online. It had to do with the 1990s where implants were mostly saline. There was a lot of rupture. There was a lot of ladies wanted, wanting bigger, smaller. Ladies who had kids after breast augmentation, they started sagging, they needed a replacement. Some patient had a capsular contracture with a tightening of the envelope around the breast needing replacement. So there was an average of eight to 10 years for replacement. Now these are implants and we use only smooth implant today. Our smooth implants are very, very, very safe. They're very uh, well enveloped by the silicone lining. The rupture rate is very low. The capsular rate is about one to 3%. So again, very low. We do recommend our patient to come every 10 to 15 years to see their plastic surgeon, to have an assessment, to make sure everything is okay. Uh, ladies are asked to continue their ultrasound and mammograms. Uh, in Canada, it's 50 years old unless there are family history of problems with breasts, so they start earlier. Otherwise, we see them, and in my office, if they look good, there's no issue, the symmetry is there, they're happy with the volume and the size and the shape, we usually just continue to follow up uh, over every two years. Tom from Ottawa has a question. Should I get facial implants, filler, or fat transfer? Good question. It's a long answer. I'll try to be brief. Fillers are convenient. They're quick and easy. They're done in office. There are no downtime. Usually I use the cannula technique, so bruises, very rare. Fillers can go anywhere. It's instant result. Patients can be involved with the making of their jaw angle, their chin, their cheeks, their lips, their temples, etc. It's so very convenient. Our newer fillers last longer. They last up to two years now, so the maintenance is lesser than in the old days. Fat grafting is interesting. I do a lot of fat grafting. Uh, there are, are a lot of swelling, a lot of swelling, a lot of bruising. So it's convenient and common to add fat grafting during your facelift procedure because my patient is already taking some time off. You have to be careful with fat grafting, however, because fat that survives, 30, 40 to 60% will survive, will remain physiological over the years, which means that at 40 years old, most of us are still relatively fit, but as we get older, we gain weight and that fat will grow with you. So it's not unusual nowadays to see ladies that were done 20 years ago look great, but they've gained weight today and now they have a moon face, as we call it, from the fat grafting. And fat grafting is not easy to remove in the face because of the nerves, we cannot liposuction. So I always do my fat grafting in the face very conservatively. 
Now, as far as implants are concerned, same as body implants, they are form stable, they're, they're always will provide the shape, they require surgery, they come with their own issues such as in, in incisions, infection, asymmetry, palpability, visibility, so we need to make sure we have enough coverage, soft tissue over. They cannot be placed anywhere. They're made to go right over the angle of the jaw, right over the chin, so there's a little gap here that may not be filled. Cheek implants are limited. We have a little nerve here, so cheek implants will only go outside of the nerve and will not go into the inner trough here. So that's when maybe some implants and fillers are required. Ultimately, it's what patients are looking for, the amount of downtime they can have, and also how much they can tolerate maintenance versus downtime of one surgery. Thank you very much for watching. Hashtag quarantine with Dr. Mark Dupere. Stay tuned, I will continue throughout the COVID pandemic to keep you informed and somewhat entertained with aesthetic questions. Thank you.